Okay, so welcome again to this new webinar organized by the Maternal Health Supplies Caucus of the Reproductive Health Supplies Coalition. Uh, please uh, keep your microphones muted in order to prevent background noise. My name is Milka Dinev and I backstop the caucus and I'll be your host um, this afternoon. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the audio and video will be sent to all members of the caucus in a couple days, uh, maybe tomorrow. We will not open the microphones, but you are most welcome to write your questions in the chat box at the right-hand side window of, your, um, of the platform. Without further ado, let me introduce um, our main panelist, uh, Ms. Uh, Meg Worth. Um, Meg is the president and the founder of Mater Nova, and uh, she will be moderating the webinar. So the microphone is yours, Meg. Wonderful, thank you everyone. And uh, welcome to this uh, launch. Uh, we are launching a very exciting technology uh, developed by our two other panelists here today. Um, so there's much to much to celebrate uh, in uh, six plus years of work that have gone into developing uh, the Premi test, uh, launching today on World Prematurity Day. Still much work, however, to be done. Uh, very briefly, Maternova is the commercialization partner with uh, Birth Tech. Um, we accelerate access to innovation for low and middle income countries focused on uh, the birth scenario, maternal, newborn, child and reproductive health. I am very, very pleased to have the two inventors of the PremiTech, uh, the PremiTest device here today. We have uh, Dr. Zilma Reis and we have Dr. Rodney Guimaraes. You, know, you can see my Portuguese is not so good, but uh, we're absolutely thrilled to have this pair uh, of, of innovators and scientists here today. Uh, we will be able to have plenty of time at the end for questions. And we also thought it would be, um, instead of having it just be a, a slideshow, really to do it more as an interview uh, style where we, we ask some, some questions. I ask some questions and when necessary, we explain them by uh, by by visuals of slide and even perhaps a, a brief demo of the technology itself with Rodney. There are uh, some other people to quickly introduce. We have uh, Karina Cartwright and Prakash Veenam from the Maternova team are here. And uh, let's see, we have uh, Paolo, if you could raise your hand from the birth tech team, Paolo Adriano Borges. And, um, and then, of course, many others who have worked on the technology as well. So uh, without uh, too much further ado, I would like to uh, be sure to mention, um, and I'm sure we'll hear more, hear more from uh, the uh, inventors, all of the supporters uh, of the research and clinical trials that have built this uh, technology up until today, um, ranging from Grand Challenges Canada to Fio Cruz, you can see them all listed here. So uh, first, uh, we're going to start with Zilma with a quick question, which is before we dive into the specifics of the Premi test and what it can do uh, at the moment of birth and the birth of, a, of an infant, I wanted if you could explain to us the current birth scenario in a setting where there is no ultrasound. And that will kind of get us started by setting the scene. Okay. It's my pleasure to be here today talking about the Primitest device with Maternova and Birth Tech. My name is Zilma. Thank you for such an opportunity. But scenario are not the same everywhere, as, as you know. In terms of a minimal set of technologies to support obstetric care, the time of birth is critical to the survival of women and the babies. 
the risk of mortality and morbidity could increase considerably if complications arise as preterm birth. Recognized prematurity is critical to judge the newborn's viability and to attend to immediate needs in childbirth settings, guiding the complexity of the health care provided to the newborn. Some newborns need more than others. Without gestational age information, resources can be misplaced and the survival of the newborn could be neglected. As the reference for gestational age, age dating is the early obstetric ultrasound, scenarios with limited access to this technology often have fragility in offering due care. For example, most pregnant uh, women, more than 90% in sub-Saharan African countries had no access to antenatal ultrasound. Lack of accuracy in the gestational age can impact the delivery of newborn care in such places. Who are the baby at risk? Is the first question without an answer. In my country, Brazil, ultrasound machines are routine for diagnosis. However, recent studies pointed out that around 50% of birth had not an accurate, an accurate gestation age due to late prenatal care and lack of at least one ultrasound access before 20 weeks. And so that helps explain a little bit about um, the, the, the purpose of the preemie test. We're going to talk more about why it's so important to be able to assess gestational age at birth. Uh, we may have questions uh, towards the end from neonatologists and obstetricians who are doing this every day in, in different settings. But Zilma, what was the the inspiration for what you noticed? I mean, there's always uh, one moment or a series of moments, but what you noticed about the skin of the newborn in your practice as an obstetrician that gave you the idea to start this journey on this particular technology? That's a good question, Maggie. Physical characteristics of newborns have been used to estimate maturity for years. Hmm. I know this as an obstetrician and my colleagues as well. Clinical score systems to assess the newborn's maturity consider skin texture and color as signals to estimate gestational age. However, under visual inspection, the assessment of skin maturity is subjective. The kickoff idea was to measure the skin maturity using light because skin transparency depends on its thickness and consistency. So it depends on maturity and maturity is associated with gestational age. But honey can tell more. <laughs> <laughs> um, wonderful. So uh, we'll, we'll get to the, 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 the beautiful uh, sort of simplicity of the way that light is used in the preemie test to assess uh, in a non-invasive way to assess the gestational age of the baby. Uh, Zilma, if you could just qu very quickly explain uh, from a clinician's point of view, when the baby is born and you, if you don't have an ultrasound, how might you decide which clinical pathway to take? What are, what are the pathways you could take? As I told you, gestational age information may be critical in planning immediate health care. On the view of the risk, the majority of births are among women without risks for complications for themselves or, or the babies. However, low and middle income countries lead neonatal deaths associated with prematurity. Most deaths are preventable with low cost intervention during the first day of life. Since the respiratory system is among the last fetal organs to mature, prematurity is associated with enhanced morbidity as respiratory fail. Health professionals have the compromise to recognize preterm birth, to offer the due care or transfer them 
to a perinatal unit of reference. The opportune management of risk is sensitive to the gestational age information. It involves temperature maintenance, ventilatory support, transport to a neonatal intensive care unit, and the early treatment of respiratory distress syndrome, the most severe complication of the tumor. Gestational age guides better choice for the baby. Wonderful. Thank you so much for, for the introduction and the inspiration for the test. Um, as noted, uh, Zilma is an obstetrician who is was seeing this uh, scenario repeated again and again. And as I understand the story, uh, went to Rodney, a astrophysicist, to come up with this novel solution. And Rodney, if you could explain um, how the preemie test is now um, in the clinical trials and beyond, how it's folded into the clinical scenario. That would be wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think that is show how to use the preemie test. Maybe it's better. Um, I have here my baby, you can see. And I have here the device also. Okay, I put this together in the same uh, picture. Um, um, when, when you have the delivery, immediately after the delivery, you can use the preemie test, okay? You only need to clean, for example, the foot of the baby because you have some um, a kind of oils that the name is, um, that I forgot now. Um, but you need to clean. Thank you, Zilma, because I'm a physicist, not a physician. It's close, but it's not the same. Vernix. It's Vernix. Vernix. Thank, you, thank you, it's the Vernix. Mm -hmm. um, well, after cleaning the foot of the baby, you can use directly here, okay? You turn on in this button, you touch this button and turn on the device. It's turned on, it's difficult to see because of the lights, but you have two options. The first one is to measure the gestational age, and the second one is the prognosis. Let's, let's show the first one, okay? I choose the first one, and after that, I can see here how to use the preemie test, okay, in this picture. I use this in the foot of the baby. It's automatic, automatically, when I touch the foot of the baby, okay, this turn on, and you have also uh, a vibration to show me that it's turned on, and after the vibration show me that it's turned off also. I did this, I do this the second time, a second time here in the foot of the baby. And after a third time, third and last time, okay? When it's finished, I enter with some data, for example, the sex of the baby, because it's important to give the results of the nutritional stage also of the baby. I enter here the sex and I validate. I validate. I enter with the weight of the baby, okay? In grams, I validate also, and I enter with uh, the use or not of corticoids, and I validate also. After that, well, I'm not a baby. My skin is like a skin baby, but <laughs> you can see here, um, if you have the information of the gestational age, you have the gestational age and the error, okay? And you have a backlight here. This backlight can be green, can be orange or red, depend of the classification, okay? If it's, for example, a very preterm, it's, uh, if it's a moderate preterm or it's an extreme preterm, okay? Or it's a term baby also with a green light. Well, I touch here because it's finished. And after that here, okay, you cannot see uh, also, you can see here the nutri nutritional stage of the baby also. If the baby is uh, small for the gestational age, and if the baby is appropriate for the gestational age or large, large for the gestational age also. And it's, this takes something like one minute or less to, to do this. It's very, very fast. And after that, you can choose and direct your care, okay? And this is the pathway that we use after the delivery, the preemie test. Thank you I'd, so I'd, I'd like to add one information, may I? Of course. The technology was developed to predict 
the newborn risk during the first 24 hours of life as soon as possible, so as not to waste precious time to initiate care actions. Only this. Wonderful. Um, and we're going to, in a, in a few moments, hear a little bit about how, how the device is in use in Brazil, um, clinical trials in Mozambique, and, um, and then, as noted, uh, plenty of time at the end, you know, for your, for your questions. Um, I wanted to just briefly show, here's, uh, here's the device in use in, uh, with a, a, an actual baby, and then um, a very nice, clear picture of the screen to the right where you see this preemie test is a green readout as Rodney was explaining you would get a red readout if something was was wrong this this baby is appropriate for gestational age uh, so so you're getting a, a reading um, quickly with those three uh, lights and reading quite quickly to let you know that this baby is uh, appropriate uh, for gestational age. So um, let's see, my next question is uh, really again for Rodney, uh, could you tell us in um, really, I guess, somewhat non-technical terms, how it is that the light measures uh, the thickness of the skin and and why that's important. What is the relationship to gestational age and lung maturity? I mean, this is really the brilliance of the test itself. Well, um, I will, sorry. Uh, where am I here? here. Well, um, it's good also to show the, the, the device here. Uh, the light leaves this probe that you can see here, okay? And just go through the skin. And it's reflected by uh, the layers of the skin. It, it means that it's related to the thickness of the skin. And also it's reflected by the components of the skin, uh, like melanin and collagen and et cetera, okay? And this comes back to the probe. And we have a, a sensor here that sends the signal for a microcontroller. And after you display the results here. Well, like you can see in this slide, you have this relationship between the evolution of the skin, okay, and the gestational age. And uh, this is the way that you measure the gestational age. You make this relationship between the skin maturity and the gestational age, okay, using our clinical trial and that we did in Brazil. And can you say uh, a, a little bit more about um, the correlation with uh, the lung maturity? Yeah, sorry, I forgot about the lung maturity also. Uh, we have this kind of uh, relationship because uh, the skin is also an organ of the human body, like the lung. And uh, I, I learned with Zuma and others that work with us that the lung is the last uh, organ uh, developing in our human body. Um, the skin also, uh, the skin maturity can be uh, related to the skin, to the lung maturity. And after that, you can say if the baby, if you know that, that the baby has uh, the skin uh, and related the skin maturity to the lung maturity. This relationship also is done with the clinical trial. And in the second option that you see uh, in the beginning in the device, you can choose this prognosis um, from the first 72 hours of life of the baby. And there, for example, uh, you can show you if the baby has some kind of disease like uh, the distress syndrome, respiratory syndrome or tachypnea, or if the baby needs uh, intensive uh, unit care, neonatal intensive unit, unit care, or um, if the baby, for example, needs some respiratory assistance also, okay? In, th and this, in this way, you can also give some information about the lung maturity. Wonderful, thank you. And uh, you can start collecting uh, your questions in about 10 minutes time. We can dig into any of these uh, topics a bit further. I would like to turn to, you know, uh, the actual 
uh, clinical use now of uh, the device in a couple of different settings. If we could start uh, with you, uh, Zilma, on, on the use in Brazil, if you could describe uh, how how it's uh, going and how it's utilized in in this this setting. Okay, uh, there are five reference perinatal centers uh, with trained health professionals for using the device in Brazil. I'd like to nominate them because they are in the audience uh, and because we are a national team right now. Uh, under, regula under regulatory agents permission and ethical permission, we assessed 800 newborn as part of a clinical trial. Uh, the centers are Sofia Feldman Hospital, Gabriela Neves and team, thank you, Clinical Hospital of my university, UFMG, Professor Roberta Romanelli and team, thank you, in the north of Brazil, Universidade Federal do Maranhão, Dr. Marineia and team, thank you. In the middle of the country, Agamib, Dr. Marta and team, thank you. In the south of the country, Ubra Hospital, Dr. Paulo Nade and team, thank you. We are ready to introduce the device into the market as soon as possible. Wonderful. And uh, we do have a question that's uh, quite um, just quickly to touch on the corticosteroids, um, why include the, the corticosteroids in the algorithm in some settings? Uh, yes. Could you answer that uh, quickly? Um, um, uh, maybe Zoom is better than me. Yes. But I can help also. Um, we, we note this, this phenomenon and we have uh, a, a, a reason, explanation for it. It's because the antenatal corticosteroid therapy uh, used to uh, promote lung maturity is able to promote skin maturity as well and other organs of the fetus. And this, import, this uh, information was important to set our algorithms to, to better results. That's the point. Um, it's it's also good to remember that it's not mandatory, okay? Yes. It's not mandatory. I mean, if you don't have, uh, you don't use it, uh, corticosteroid, it's not necessary to enter this uh, information, okay? The sex, it's important for the nutritional stage, okay, options. Um, but for example, if you don't have the weight also, it's not necessary to enter. You can use only the, the reflection that you obtain in the device. Wonderful. All right, I would love to turn next to Mozambique, uh, where, uh, where uh, Rodney will tell us a bit about the studies uh, that are ongoing in Mozambique. Okay, well, uh, like Zilma told us before, we have finished also our uh, national clinical trial in Brazil, okay? You will obtain a model that you have using now in the, in the Primitest test in our device. And uh, the international clinical trial that it's uh, in Brazil and Mozambique, okay, you have completed uh, in last week, and it's to use the device in a real scenario, um, in a scenario that uh, you don't have the information about the gestational age, or uh, you cannot trust in this information. Great. Okay, so uh, again, uh, we, we want to just go back to the test itself. Um, we uh, want to sort of focus on the four aspects of the test. Uh, it's non-invasive, of course, it's light. It has no impact on the baby. It's portable. You've seen how uh, small and uh, compact the device is. It's, it's low cost. Um, and then it's it's accurate, and we're going to get into uh, uh, some of the data about um, its accuracy. Uh, but I had one quick question for Zilma, which is related to this set of criteria here, and that is um, how difficult is it to train a team, um, particularly, uh, let's say, um, a team you know that is not accustomed to using 
too many uh, diagnostics. Uh, if you could speak either from the Brazilian or the Mozambique experience on that, that would be helpful. Okay, it's a good question. The device is easy to use to achieve the necessary high performance performance during the clinical trials. We trained 20 health professionals in best practices to medical device validation during this training. Uh, one hour was enough to train them for the medical device uh, assessment. Uh, this, the skin assessment occurs with the newborn inside incubators, open heating cribs, common cribs, or in the mother's lap, just touching the foot for a few seconds. The device warns about errors of measurement under a set of non constraints of the skin reflectance, a situation that requires a new attempt. Just is, just, just this. Correctly following the device's protocol, easy protocol, we found a very low error among the users and inter users. Hmm. So it's really very easy to use. Wonderful. Uh, and then the next question is really on the, um, I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions on how accurate is this device? Uh, the sensitivity, the specificity, how does it compare to the gold standard? Uh, so I believe, uh, Zilma, you will start the answer to that question. Thank you. I need uh, this picture to explain the sciences behind the, the, the device. The development of this technology followed its steps of science to achieve the market with safety and clinical strength. During six years, from the lab tests to the clinical trials, we assessed 1,300 newborns. The first step brought together the preclinical phase and proof of concept with Bill and Melinda Gates support. In 2019, we started a blind and multi-center clinical trial in five Brazilian perinatal centers, arising data to provide expanded efficacy of predict predictive algorithms. The Brazilian Ministry of Health supported this study. A second clinical trial ongoing in Brazil and Mozambique will provide standard validation, as Claudine told, uh, for the algorithms. Moreover, this study intends to evaluate the safety, precision, and usability of this new medical device to offer a suitable product to support well, uh, health professionals during the childbirth. Great challenges, Canada and Philippines, Brazil are the supporters. Could you please, the next, Maggie? In trial one, we enrolled 781 newborns. We compared the gestational age estimated with the preemie test with pregnancy date comparators calculated using obstetric ultrasound exams and the last menstrual period. The preemie test predicted the reference gestational age with an error of four days, more or less, adjusting the skin maturity to birth weight and antenatal corticosteroid exposition with machine learning algorithms. In addition, in addition uh, the preemie test discriminated term from preterm newborns with 96 uh, uh, of correct classifications. So with this result, this, the, the device can offer, really offer a reliable, a reliable gestational age in both scenarios to mitigate the modern memory bias, unknown dating, pregnancy dating, or late prenatal care. The next one, please. And, and now uh, uh, it's important this simulation. Using part of the data, we analyze it only the newborns with unknown or unreliable last menstrual period. All of this baby had the true gestational age based on the early ultrasound. However, this information was hidden for the users. This approach simulates the target scenario for the preemie test. In this situation, uh, with an unreliable gestational age, the device achieved 91 to 98% of preterm birth 
of preterm babies detection. Besides, the overall rate of success was 96. It means 96 newborns are correctly classified as term or pretend every 100 newborns. So that's it. Wonderful. And uh, this is one other uh, sort of um, uh, plot of the gold standard against the Premi test. Uh, Rodney or, or Zilma, do you want to speak briefly to this? And then I think we will be almost ready for all the questions. Rodney? I think it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> because it's physics. <laughs> Rodney, you're in mute, I believe. Sorry, I'm not in my office and I have some problems here of connection also to be connected. Okay. Can, can you repeat, please, the question? Ah, yeah, about, about the, the results, the accuracy. Yes. Yeah, I think that uh, Joseph Obur also asked something about that. Um, there is another, I think that there is another one that it's better to see. Um, that is the comparison between, um, no, the comparison <laughs> between uh, uh, the Premi test and the other, the other forms of measurements, um, like, uh, hi. This one? Um, I, what I can't see here, Meg. We we cannot see it, Meg. Yeah. Going right back. Yes. To the, okay. Now. Yeah, that one. That one exactly. That one. Um, because it's a question of uh, Joseph Obur also about the the comparison between the the tests. You can in my sorry. You can see here the primitive test, okay, and um, with the bar the error bar also. And compared with the other uh, ways to make uh, the gestational age measurement, the last menstrual period, uh, uterus measurements, fetal movements, uh, late ultrasound, and uh, the early ultrasound, and etc. The Ballard um, test also, and you can see that after the early ultrasound, we have the uh, small error, and um, then the other. Uh, ways to make the measurement of the gestational age. And um, now our errors are less than that one. That one, it's uh, the first proof of concept that you did. Now our error, it's around uh, four, four days. No, Zuma? Yes, four days. Yeah, it's four days. It's four days now, because that one was done with 115 babies. And now with 781, our error is less than this bar that you can see, but well, it's, uh, it's, it's better than the other ways to measure. Um, and you only lost for uh, the early ultrasound. Great, thank you. So uh, this is really just to zoom out again, and, and we've been really talking about the specifics of the preemie test. Uh, we've heard how and why it was developed what's unique about it. And then most recently, uh, we were looking at how um, sensitive and specific it is relative to the gold standard and relative to um, ultrasound. Um, remembering again that in many birth settings, there is no opportunity for ultrasound, uh, but yet um, yet a preterm baby will will be at risk and diagnosis of a preterm baby is, is an urgent and important goal. Uh, One million uh, deaths in the first day of life, making birth um, the, the riskiest day for newborns. And so to zoom back out to the global level, um, having a new method, a non-invasive and lower cost method um, one that can be universally available is, is uh, the culmination of the six years of work by this, uh, this amazing team. I'd like to celebrate that, um, say how honored and enthusiastic we are at uh, Maternova to work to get uh, this immediately into the settings where it's needed most, working on each of the commercial steps. And uh, we have plenty of time uh, for, for questions, and uh, you can either uh, raise your hand using the method. Um, we do have a very important question that was asked early on about um, skin tone, uh, color of the skin and influence on measurement, which of course is uh, 
very important for its universality. Yes. Uh, I think Hodney can you talk can, about can the, the start, You can start from the technical point of view. You are using uh, infrared light. Yes. It means that uh, uh, melanin is not a problem for us, okay, from the technical point of view. But also you tested this in places that uh, show us that the, the color of the skin is not important. In our model, also the color of the skin is not entry. It's different from the from the bilirubinometer, for example, that the skin uh, can you know, have some uh, uh, importance, uh, but not, not in, in our device. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to, to add some, some information. Uh, we already um, provide a study just to answer this question. And uh, Paola is in the audience and it was uh, uh, her master thesis. And um, we provide data to, to prove that in the soul of the food, there is no melanin enough to uh, modificate the, the reflection of the skin. So uh, it's, it's about um, biological uh, reasons and about physics. Mm. Wonderful. And then going back to the antenatal corticosteroids, uh, Tamar had a, a bit of a different question than I had uh, stated. And that was um, a little bit more information on how antenatal corticosteroids is used in the algorithm to determine gestational age. For those people that do choose to use that variable, how is it embedded? Yes. Uh, we fact, we, in fact, we have an algorithm that supports three scenarios, only the skin measurement, the skin measured plus birth weight, better results. And when a corticosteroid was uh, used in the, during the antenatal uh, period, we can adjust the, 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 the algorithm and so the result is still better. So we can uh, give answers for uh, these three scenarios, but with uh, all this information, the prediction is uh, very accurate. And it's important also because I learned also with Zuman and others that um, the use of corticosteroids and also uh, change the maturity of the organs of the human body. And it's normal that uh, you need to use this information also to measure the skin maturity and make this relationship between skin maturity and lung maturity and et cetera. And in the Mozambique uh, trial, do they use all three scenarios or do they, or, or how, how is uh, the corticosteroid piece in that trial? Yes, I can talk uh, a little bit more about the Mozambique uh, trial. Uh, when a baby is born, uh, with two and a half kilos or less, we suspect preterm birth. In our practice, gestational age sometimes is unreliable and the gold standard is not frequently available. In Mozambique, it's, it's very frequent. Now, join two issues, is small and without pregnancy dating, the newborn risk of death is high. And, um, Primitest is the new technology to assess the maturity using data science to provide this information. And in, in uh, Mozambique, we are uh, worried about uh, newborns with two and a half kilos or less and to decide if the baby is preterm or is small for gestational age. So because of this, we need sex, birth weight when we have the complete set of data easy to obtain in both scenario, we can picture the risk of the baby. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we have a few other uh, questions uh, that are quite relevant. One uh, very practical, which is about how to power uh, the device, both the initial power and recharge, um, anything that you can share on uh, battery, electricity, and power uh, for the device. To show um, its battery, 
it's another question from Joseph. Um, in the beginning, it was uh, not it was not our our shoes, but Zuma told me that maybe in some scenarios, battery it's better. And now you use battery, okay? Great. And then a very um, interesting and important question: Can the device be used to estimate the gestational age of stillbirth babies? And that Zuma can answer better. Oh, it's sorry, I was reading the 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 the, the other questions. Uh, I, I can I can start. I can start. And in the in the proof of concept, you have also used it in stillbirth babies. Okay. And it works very oh, well. Oh, yeah, okay. Zuma can can help me, but it, we did this <laughs> in a, in the proof of concept, yes. and this can be used also in stillbirth babies. Yes, yes. Uh, we have a sample of forty uh, stillbirth. Uh, the specimen is very hard to obtain, but we can prove that in stillbirth, in fresh stillbirth, we can estimate gestational age using this technology. We, ha we have uh, a master thesis with part of uh, results publicated, but not. Uh, but we, we have to uh, explore more. And um, our priority was the, the, the baby that is born alive. But uh, we know that it's possible to check the prematurity or the, the gestation age when the stillborn is fresh. Great. Um, I always have more questions, but I can ask them at any time. Um, additional questions uh, from the audience here, or if you've been involved in one of the studies or the specific uh, master's um, theses around one of the sub uh, areas of, of research that has been uh, noted, we are happy to learn more about that as well. Um, there is a question of Joseph Obur about data to demonstrate the ability of the test versus the standard care. Uh, we have two clinical trials ongoing, just finishing data and uh, a lot of papers in preparation, but we already have uh, three or four papers that uh, we can offer. Uh, during the proof of concept, uh, 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 I think uh, step by step, we are answering the questions and to, to deliver uh, for the, the society a robust and accurate uh, device to its major gestational age. We know how important this information is for healthcare, and we want to deliver a device with safety that uh, can guide the health profession. So we have uh, many papers, and but the best papers we are in preparation because we just finished the clinical trials. Great, and we have uh, approximate cost of the device. Um, we will be, Maternova will be selling the device it, tiered pricing in different markets. Um, we can certainly um, share more information about that. Um, and uh, yeah, we do tier the pricing uh, somewhat for middle income uh, versus high income versus low income countries. I um, The other thing that we are committed to doing is also giving a um, price per test based on, you know, the longevity of this, this, uh, device, unlike a rapid diagnostic that you throw away, obviously, uh, this, this device, um, you know, will be pennies, uh, per, per use. So another question, uh, we have here is please explain again why it is applied three times to the baby's foot. So we did hear it's, um, on the heel that there's, uh, yeah. The color of the skin is quite standard there, um, but uh, a little bit more about the three measurements. Okay, I, I, I can do this, but well, um, uh, it's, because we it's are the academics. Way, it's not the way that physicians use the other device, the other devices also. It's in this way. 
And really, each time when you touch the skin, each measurement, it's 10 measurements, okay? And it's, uh, it's in fact, it's third measurement. It's not only three, but each time that I touch the skin, I took 10 measurements, second time, 10 measurements, and third time, 10 measures. It's because of statistics, it's better to make the statistics, okay? And if you have some errors, you receive um, uh, some advices about that you need to do a second time, a third time. It means that it, three times because the most of the devices um, are like that. It's, uh, you measure three times, but in fact, we are using this third times. And we use the median of 30 measurements. Um, a, a question that I uh, have asked before, so I do know the answer is um, just sort of the, the ease of use and the interest from the clinicians. You mentioned all the different areas of Brazil um, and uh, Mozambique as well. Could you speak a little bit uh, to the clinicians' interest and excitement about the device outside of the clinical trial? In other words, once they're going to continue on with their regular clinical work. You need to register the, the device in, in every country. Um, we started with the, the CE mark, um, but it's take a long time. We started the FGA also next year. Um, we have started also the Anvisa the registration in Brazil because you did all the path, you know, and all the clinical trials necessary to make this. And in some countries, are is not necessary for private uh, hospitals like in, in India. It's because of that that are large and uh, preferentially in Brazil and India. But for other countries also, maybe Meg can say it is better than me. Um, in some countries, um, uh, you can uh, use the, the device without uh, register. And principally, I, I'm, I know that in India, for a private hospital, it's like that. Yes, and the priority will, will um, a, a top priority will be getting the device to the, there's a, a sort of a top 10 list of countries where the greatest number of uh, premature uh, babies are born and thus where babies are at greatest risk um, on the day of, of birth. Uh, we have another question. Um, uh, what sort of maintenance is required for the device, short term versus long term? Um, I mean, the the only the only kind of uh, maintenance that you need is to make uh, um, to use to calibrate the device. Okay, normally you need to calibrate each ear, um, like a bilirubinometer, for example. It's in the same way, and well, it's the only kind of maintenance that you need, and it means that each year you will be remembered that you need to calibrate the, the, the device, okay? Good questions from Joseph, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> Great. Well... We have covered a lot of ground. Um, any anyone uh, have a, a a final question? Something they're uh, curious about? Any final comments from our uh, inventors who have taken time away to share? Uh, you know this what what I think and what the Matronova team believes is a really uh, game changing innovation. I I. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here um, and for uh, any questions that you may have, please, uh, we'll put our information in the chat, uh, info, info at matronova.net. Uh, we're happy to uh, share clinical data, both that that's already finished and that that will soon be written up. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thank you, Meg, and thank you, Maternova, for organizing this webinar and giving us the chance of learning more about the, the Premi device. 
congratulations, Dr. Rice and Dr. Guimaraes for your presentations and for all your research and contributions. It's been a pleasure for the Maternal Health Supplies Caucus of the Reproductive Health Supplies Coalition to have hosted this webinar today. It's a little bit of our normal work with maternal health supplies, but um, it's been a, a pleasure really to, to open this up to, to a bigger audience. And thank you again for everything. As I said before, um, the meeting has been recorded and I will send links to the video and um, the audio of the meeting uh, tomorrow or or um, Friday. Thank you again. Thank you, Milka. Bye-bye. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.